This morning, we will show you new software enhancements, workflow scenarios, and solutions to your everyday problems. You'll see solutions that will appeal to both users and managers. But before we begin, we'd like you to listen to some of your ideas that you told us was important for ArcGIS Desktop. How about exporting a raster based on drawing a graphic shape? I'd really like to be able to rearrange my bookmarks in the order that I want, and even better, save them between map documents. I really like what you guys have done about the, the transparency on layers, but I'm missing it on the legend side. There are many keyboard shortcuts, but I would like an option to sequentially turn on and off layers in a group layer. ArcGIS has a great tool for geocoding, but uh, how about reverse geocoding? It would be nice if I could convert graphics that I've put on the map to features that I can use for analysis. It would be nice if after I performed a join, the field aliases on that join persisted. Wouldn't it be great if I could just pick a feature on the map and view its layer properties? So the pulse drawing, could be, there be something like pulse labeling? In response to your requests, let me now show you what we've added to ArcGIS 9.3 Desktop with our top 10 countdown list of time savers. Coming in at number 10 are bookmarks. You'll find that bookmarks are now more easily accessible from the top level menu, making it easier to access those commonly used places. In addition, the bookmark manager has been redesigned. You now have the ability to rearrange the bookmarks in the order you want. That was one of my favorites as well. You can also go through and you can double click a bookmark to navigate to that extent. You can update the extent of an existing bookmark, and you can save and load bookmarks to a file so that you can more easily share it between map documents and users. <laughs> Number nine on our countdown list is a new capability called Pause Labels. On the labeling toolbar, you'll find there's a new button which allows you to temporarily suspend the drawing of all labels. You can then navigate around on the map, perform other operations, and turn them all back on with a single click of a button. <laughs> Number eight on the countdown list is a new keyboard shortcut when you work with group layers. In this example, we're looking at time series weather data over the west coast of the United States. If I wanted to step through this data through time, I would have to turn on a layer but then I would need to turn off the previous layer. It takes two mouse clicks, two redraws of the map. At ArcGIS 9.3, we added a new keyboard shortcut that allows you to hold down the Alt key as you turn on the layer, and it turns off all other layers within the group. This makes it easy to step through a time series collection of data. You can also use it for non-time series data if you just want it to change to a very different map and a different set of layers with one click. So for those of you that use group layers, you'll find that this is a very nice enhancement as well. Number seven on our countdown list is a capability that allows you to clip a raster or an image to a graphic shape. In the city of San Luis Obispo, there's an old tank farm on the south side of town that's undergoing reclamation. If I wanted to study this area, I might just want to define a graphic shape or polygon, which will be my study area. I can then use that now to extract the digital elevation model that you see underneath. With 9.3, there's a new option to use the selected graphic during this export process. So instead of creating a new feature class, adding a feature, and running a geoprocessing tool, we've streamlined that operation to just use the selected graphic. Number six on our countdown list is a capability to do with transparent legends. In this example, we're looking at noise level pollution from the highway and the railroad line, 
And what we often use to improve our cartography is the transparency. So what we want to do is set the transparency for this noise level, and we'll set it to about 60%. And what you'll see is the color brightness on the map doesn't quite match that on the legend. This was a challenge with ArcGIS 9.2. However, with 9.3, there's a new data frame property that allows you to simulate the layer transparency in all your legends, and the colors now more closely match. Number five on our countdown list is about table sorting, aliases, and joins. So let's take a look at the detailed parcel data for the city, and we'll go ahead and open up the attribute table, and we're going to look at a couple enhancements. The first is if you want to sort this table on multiple fields, you can now use the advanced sorting option. So I can choose to sort by the date it was last edited, who the editor was, and you'll see you now have that capability. The second enhancement for tables is if you look at the field headers, these are showing you the field aliases. There's an option to change this between the field aliases back to the internal database names. So this is what's stored in the database, and these are the field aliases. You can choose what you'd like to see. It gets even better, because once you perform a table join, what you'll discover is those field aliases are going to be persisted. So let's go ahead and join that to the assessor records. We've now performed our join. When we scroll over, you can look at the table name dot field name syntax or use the field aliases, so you no longer have to re-enter those field aliases. Number four on our countdown list is the capability to do reverse geocoding. So on the geocoding toolbar, you'll find there is a new tool called the Address Inspector. If you press and hold this tool and move around the mouse, you'll find that it's automatically calculating the closest address using your geocoding locator, and then you can automatically mark that position on the map and label it with the correct address. You can use that for street addresses, or you could change to the closest street intersection or cross street and do the same kind of operation. So for those of you that need to add addresses easily to your map, think about using the geocoding locators and this reverse geocoding technique. Now, it gets even more interesting when you combine it with number three on the countdown list, which is converting graphics to features. Now that we've created these graphics, on the drawing toolbar, there's a new option called Convert Graphics to Features. You select the graphics, and they'll be automatically converted with all their attributes and their symbology intact. So what you get is a new layer with those addresses already written to the database, as well as the symbology that, of course, you can update and change to whatever you want with the layer properties.